and girls, it is me, DCT, back once again. Sorry for that week hiatus. It was, well, something went out of control. Talk she was have little funky problems, but that is not the case tonight. I am back here live for you, the people here on the Duke CT Lounge. If you want to call me, Duke CT, the phone number is... 724-444-7444. Once again, the, the number is 724-444-7444. And the call ID to connect to me, Duke CT, is 92417. Once again, the call ID is 92417. And before I get things started, what have you, I'm going to say this. There will not be a Duke CT Lounge next week. I'm sorry. Because, well, ladies and gentlemen, I will be at MAGFest Next week, MAGFest 12, I'll be there, alive, what have you, and partying, celebrating, laughing memories, shooting like a thousand panels like I do every year, and that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to have a great time, the panels, everything. Then next year, well, if you look at my YouTube channel, I'll put like the footage I use on my Ava Media uh, Live Game Portable. Yes, I have that now. For my, uh, it was a great Christmas present uh, for my dad. Thank you so very much. Now I can actually do some um, uh, some interesting live streaming and all this type of stuff. And hell, I will be uh, I will probably be doing some let's plays in the near future because I finally got some good uh, did some editing tricks here and there to finally get the right amount of ratio and such. And and now <clears throat> that I know what to do, I feel like I can actually do some real good work in the gaming video game. You know, when the, really in the video game viewing market, because I feel like I can, because I really do. That's one of my other passions besides professional wrestling is video games, and I will be doing more of that video game reviewing or what have you, and not using other people's footage, because I want to use my footage for the games I want to review, and well, you know, I don't want to just have this ah have a camera stick it up there and just have me just do that what have you, that type of look. Uh, That's not a good look for nobody. Trust me, it's not a good look. Anyway, Um, well, speaking of all the crazy stuff that happens in the future and everything, um, I got to say, 2013 was one of my, this is probably one of the most, the best year I have for growth. Uh, You know, a lot of things happened to me this year. I um, um, I entered the Whatever Hell Reviewer Contest, Got some really good advice. I got some new uh, followers uh, and subscribers, and I thank for that. Thank you for each other for opening the the shot. They gave me the opportunity to do that, um, and I will be entering in that again because well, I need to get more subs. And I don't know. I'm going to probably try to get at least one or two games. I'm going to try maybe do a review of a game this year. But you know, if I because hey, you know, with YouTube's you know crazy um, type of games for Let's Play, what have you. I'm gonna, just, um, you know, I won't put monetization up. Besides, I'm, I don't monetize my videos on YouTube. You know, the only stuff I monetize is my vlogs and my podcast. You know, majority of my fun, and majority of the money I do get online is on Blip. So, whatever, take the monetization away, and I'm good. I don't care because I still make my money on Blip. But, uh, <laughs> but seriously though, uh, the whole. YouTube stuff and gaming, which is, was a huge thing this year. Because this year, the whole YouTube, the Let's Players, this stuff was going all crazy. And this, let's be honest, this thing was coming to a head. You had Nintendo starting off with this stuff, and you had Capcom and all these other... The, uh, in fact, Capcom came out of this and said, no, we want you to stream our games. And honestly, they need some uh, help right now because Capcom is not looking too good in that department. We'll get to that eventually. But um, you know, the big stories and the video game stories in 2013. Yeah, you have to love segues on this show. Um, uh, it's live, people. Get used to it. But um, but uh, honestly, though, the YouTube versus Let's Players thing has been going on. This has been the. It's been a battle, and this and this got really big in the forefront. In fact, many people have been going after. I mean, you had uh, Let's Players like DSP Gaming. Uh, I think uh, Razor Fist, Angry Joe. You had uh, Jim Sterling, 
uh, talk about this and people who are more popular than me actually have been tired. The M movie ball talked about this on the big picture. Uh, you know, these, these huge, uh, semi huge people on the online, the internet, uh, basically, um, doing all this type of, uh, review, all these type of, uh, you know, be of views or looking at the game thing culturally or talking about it, uh, while, uh, talking about this stuff looks like this, honestly, the let's player thing, um, or have you, it's not looking good it, for the guys like Nintendo who, let's be honest, Nintendo, as much as I love your company, in fact, the funny thing is, I put, uh, my, um, I put my Ava Media gaming thing on my 360, nothing went wrong. In fact, I, uh, I look at this, I actually, uh, I might, uh, in fact, if I monetize it, I guarantee you nothing's going to go wrong with it. It's fine. I'm monetizing it, it's fine. Uh, but if I go, it's it's third party content uh, with um, it's it's third party content with uh, Nintendo. It's song, it's uh, all of these songs and what have you. And well, by we like um, Super Mario, it's like oh, it's the music and such. It's not my gameplay that calling BS on it. It's it's the it's the music, which funny enough they do own and what have you. I, in fact, I'm playing the games I'm playing on the 360. In the PS3, the games I'm playing are on the hold to test were Bioshock Infinite, GTA V, which amazingly has like multiple songs that have you, and I didn't get called for copyright yet or anything else. And and then I had um, Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Nothing bad happened yet, but when I put my Wii video up, it's like, oh my god, the copyright. You know the songs would have you, which is funny. You know, it's something that they own as well. I just, I don't know. It just seems to me that this whole thing about let's playing and the entire, which I am getting into community, by the way, the let's playing community and all this stuff, which um, I enjoy many of the let's players. You know, Game Grumps, uh, some, co- uh, you know, the um, <clears throat> Brain Scratch, uh, Super Gaming Brothers. Um, I haven't watched PewDiePie much. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm not into that yet. Uh, I've tried watching this stuff, but it's not my cup of tea. If you, you know, it's not my cup of tea. Uh, you know, just just something like that. Uh, but anyway, um, back to the point of gaming um, in 2013. It's really a Again, with the Let's Players stuff, it's something that will eventually, I feel like, they will go to court to this. Someone's going to do it. Some YouTuber, I have DSP uh, Gaming, um, said this, say that, go ahead, sue me. I want you to sue me, Sega. Uh, Sega put a copyright claim. He fought this, and he said, oh, the video was reviewed. So, like, you know, the video was going to be removed or what have you. Something, and they said, you know what, he wants to go to court. Like, <laughs> and, um, once he started making that fuss, he was going to go to court. Sega dropped the claim. You know, it was in a different language. Um, I think it was uh, Japanese. Uh, yeah, it was in Japanese. He said that he wants to go to court. And surprise, surprise. I um, mean, yeah, I'm not really surprised, but, um, you know, the companies don't want to go to court. They, don't want, they do not want to go to court and, because, let's be honest, they don't want – they want – they want they like this gray area gray area of uh, you know the the the, um, the gray area that the let's play all this type of what's copyright what's not copyright and everything else they don't they don't want uh, a true uh, a real true true um, you know, there weren't a real true set of laws because if there were some laws about this, at least a re-upping of the copyright laws or what have you, uh, you know, they would, you know, this stuff would actually cease. We'll actually get some what's what's up, what's not. They like these gray areas so they can just call in and say, okay, this thing is, uh, well, well, we'll call copyright, even though it's not my, not really copyright. But uh, but honestly, you have to evolve and you have to, this these old, Systems need to get up there. A lot of people really disagree. This way has to go out there. The copyright system, what have you. Some think we shouldn't even have one. 
some people didn't need them, and what have you. But I think the main of course of the change is that they need to be a, there is like some type of change that's going to happen. And then when you affect with people what they care about, when people care about games, and people do, they care more about these video games. They love the kids love these video games, and they love let's playing them. They love streaming them. They love um, reviewing them. <laughs> In fact, the next gen consoles have streaming capabilities. The PS4 and the uh, Xbox One have streaming capabilities. So they know Microsoft and Sony do have somewhat of a pulse to the, ga- the gaming community. They do have a somewhat of a pulse there to realize that people like this stuff and they want to do more of it. And I honestly think when the years go on, there's going to be people, and I hope to, I hope to God that Nintendo, Nintendo gets on this front and says, you know what? Okay, we were stupid. We didn't know what we were doing. The Wii U was not doing everything. We need to bring, do some Let's Play. We need to bring in the Let's Play community. We need to not do this stuff because we are so behind. We are, I mean, Nintendo is acting so much like the WWE is that sure it's making money now and it's not bleeding money like WCW or what Sega was doing back in the day, but trust me, they're getting more and more relevant. They're becoming more pache. And and when you do stuff like this that, quite honestly, makes you see even more pache. In fact, I remember there was an article that said YouTube, they, Nintendo, the high ups of Nintendo first thought uh, YouTube was a porn site. I was a porn pirate site. I'm like, really? It's this, it's here it is, right here. The lobby, in fact, here it is uh, from uh, Russia Today that actually, believe it or not, the piracy is not killing the media industry. In fact, the media industry is actually, the funny thing is, it, it, it doesn't even, um, that, that, again, it's either a net gain or is it a wash? Because in the end of the day, multiple people still buy the products, still buy it from these, in the, these big uh, media and such. And, uh, it's, uh, and, and the funny thing is, the same thing what Netflix has gone through uh, as well. In fact, you look at all these uh, reports, it's actually um, all, everything's gone up. Everything is going up. Everything is going this. It's not as, um, it's not as terrible as people think it is. Um, it's not as bad. In fact, Netflix um, has a very way, best way of beating piracy. In fact, <laughs> um, it's just uh funny thing is that this year, if you look at this, and it's uh, thanks to Forbes.com, is that Netflix actually checks piracy, site, uh, pir- uh, piracy stats and that what's the show's getting pirated? Put that they actually buy the show, put it on Netflix, and people go out and say, Oh my gosh, the show's on Netflix. We can watch a show and enjoy the show. I mean that's why Netflix and hell, even Netflix shows. Netflix shows that are, you know, are probably one of the popular stuff. In fact, uh, I think um <laughs> you know you know, all the like, you know, Say Arrested Development, the, the next thing that was, uh, uh, Arrested Development, uh, 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 you know, and all those other uh, Netflix shows, um, House of Cards, or what have you. You know what happens? Uh, for the most part, they are they uh, they they are they are not really as part as much because it's an open source, and people are like, oh my gosh, I can actually it's made affordable for people. It's affordable. It's easier to get to. It doesn't just. I mean, it's a safer <coughs> way to connect with uh, with the computer. It's an easier and faster way to get what I want. It's instant in, uh, instant gratification, uh, gratification, and it's instant gratification in society. And I think when um, when you when you have that, ladies and gentlemen, when you do that, that's where you can beat parachute. You're never going to 100 percent beat because people all want free stuff. If you can make it so that it's easier to get at a reasonable price, that's why iTunes is all over the place, and everyone really loves iTunes and the best songs and everything else. And you know, it took a while before the industry got on with iTunes, but what it did, 
the music industry is finally wrapped their head around it. They got their heads out of their rear ends, and, and they started to say, hey, this might not be a bad idea. Once gaming find a way, I mean, like Steam, for example, Steam is not perfect. It's not perfect. But it gives people a chance to buy games quickly, fast, uh, faster, or without any DRM. And there's a lot of games like Spore who just, that, that game was completely pirated, was completely taken out because of the DRM practices. And this is what, hell, and this is what happening, and what's happening with the consoles, with like season passes, doing everything else, and, and buying games that only for, you know, making only pointless DLC upgrades or what have you. You know, stuff like that. People are like, are really upset at that. With gaming, and the reason why, hell, Capcom. Let's go back to that. Capcom, ladies and gentlemen, had a huge fallout, huge, huge bankruptcy day in two thousand uh, this year. And even though it's going with its money to build up a, um, you know, a mobile and trying to find games, I wouldn't be surprised if it just slowly. <coughs> Excuse me. Slowly and surely, just goes away because Capcom. I mean, they only have 152 million in the bank right now. That's what I think was like five, six months ago. And I know they got some money from the Monster Hunter series, but <laughs> I mean, they. I think Capcom has burned so many bridges, has burned so many, uh, have pissed off so many fan bases, including myself. Um, <clears throat> I haven't really played. I mean, the last that, seriously, the, the only Capcom game I played <coughs> and bought was I think Marvel was Capcom Three, and I got ready for the 360, and uh, and I have it for the um, um, PS3. Uh, I might play that for a while, but yeah, for the most part. It, it, it's just gone. I mean, to me, it's like, oh, my goodness, why should I, you know, oh, my goodness, Capcom is just so, uh, I, I honestly think, I love Marvel vs. Capcom 3. I think it's a big game, but I'm like, this probably is one of the last things, the last real great hurrah Capcom has really, really uh, produced and such. Um, Devil May Cry, I played the demo back in the, uh, I think I first played the demo like in the first time I went to Comic Con. Uh, I think it was Comic Con 2011. I no, yeah, Comic Con 2011. Yeah, I played that. Didn't really like it, and I was like, eh, well, yeah. I didn't really care for it. It was not really that interesting. It was just there. I didn't really care for it. And I wonder a lot of people are pissed off. I wonder why. And the storyline was, and I'll probably have to play it fully, uh, see if I, uh, what Devil May Cry, the reboot, or what have you. But yeah, Capcom has not seen any good things so far this year. Again, the only real positive story is that Capcom is not, you know, saying, hey, it's cool of you guys to stream our games and such, because they need the money. Be like, oh, wow, they might like, hey, you know, this, this gamer doesn't think we're all bad. Please, uh, buy buy our stuff. We need it. <laughs> okay. And, yeah. Um, and uh, there's other stuff here, the, the new game of consoles. I haven't played yet, but I will probably get a Wii first because of Smash Brothers. Other than that, um, probably PS4. Um, and after PS4... Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, I'm not going to get an Xbox One for a pretty long while. Anyway, um, I'm going to take a small break here. I'm talking for 25 minutes now. So, yeah, I'm going to wrap everything up and talk about the big stuff in the in the WE TNA mode. And we'll be right back right after this. This is the Duke CT Lounge, year-end spectacular. Thank you so much for listening to me, Duke CT, for the entire year of 2013. We'll be right back right after this outside on the corner where I caught the bus thinking in my 
my head is colder than I thought it was Sometimes life is like that And you just quiver your lips Whisper a wish Hoping someone might give us deliverance Now deliver this message Think I could live with this mess If you could just give a few seconds To come and sit in my presence And yes, it is so precious Yes, it is a blessing Next, I'll attempt to express it With every heavy breath Cause just to make it worth it And just to make it real You always made it perfect and that's the way I feel Sometimes we think too much And we lose control But it's not what you know No, it's who you know Days that will not end I'm sure you've had them too Wishing you're still in bed And yet we have to move This is what passion do This is what passion does It's on my planets too So I send it back to love Snowflakes fell like a gift from the skies And teardrops swell And we're back I'm live here on the Duke CT Lounge Phone number as always is 724-444-7444. Once again, the number is 724-444-7444. The call ID to connect to me, DZT, is 92417. Once again, the call ID is 92417. Also, if you want to email me, ladies and gentlemen, uh, remember, you can email me, and I'll leave the link in the description. And you can email me at... DukeCTProductions at gmail.com. I'll read your emails. I'll ask questions and all the good stuff. Uh, remember, email me questions, requests for reviews, uh, any type of stuff. So remember, uh, remember, email me at DukeCTProductions at gmail.com, and I'll hopefully get back to you and, um, and all that good stuff so I can uh, get in some word uh, wise. Anyway, um, oh, WWE, WWE, people, ah, and total nonstop action. There's some um, interesting, it went to an interesting year. Very ah, interesting year. Um, first off, TNA had, um, let me talk about TNA for a second. We had a, um, the Aces and Eight storyline that went on forever, and the reveal of Bully Ray as the main guy. And Bully Ray was champion was nice, but Aces and Eights really drunk that down. And somehow, I don't know, it just felt like that the Aces and Eights storyline just they started out such problems, but yet it continued on to a point that it made them look like complete and utter jokes. I hated that. Anyway, let's move uh, let's move on to the Saban and Mindy Saban and Bully Ray feud. And that was a very short feud as Bully Ray lost the title and regained the title. Oh, way to build a new star, TNA and Chris Saban. Yeah, he got someone better as a hill turn, but I'm sorry, but it's just ugh. I don't know. I, I felt like it was just blah. I I just so you know, it just makes it it makes James and let me tell you something. It made James it, it, he got, I mean Chris Saban got James Storm a bit. And speaking of James Storm, he got more and more relevant. And hopefully this whole Gunner James Storm feud will have Gunner turn heel and James Storm win the money, that Money in the Bank feast and fire briefcase and have and let him have a good reign because AJ Styles is going to be there anymore. Let James Storm have his reign, damn it, and let him. The cowboy get his long way because he deserves it, man. Can they make that happen? I know, and, and I know Magnus is title. I love Magnus as win the championship. Personally, I want James Storm to be the guy to to, to the throne, um, to the throne, uh, Magnus and Bill, and, and you know, just have that type of thing and have James Storm uh, fight and defend not only Magnus, but hey, you have him beat other guys as well. You know, like say EC3 eventually, because I think um, he's gonna feud with Sting for a while and have Sting and have him finally get the number one, one, two, three. Because I'm actually am digging the EC3 character. Uh, when I watch, I always like that. So, and by the way, North and Fern, those two jobbers, I like the fact that TNA kept them around. They're actually pretty cool. I actually like them. In fact, they had a pretty good match over at NWA Hollywood. So, but kudos to TNA. That's a nice pickup. Um, what else? Um, Chavo Guerrero was gone. Huzzah. And let's see. 
AJ Styles is basically, people say AJ Styles is leaving TNA. You know, I'm not surprised. I think, T- and as much as I love AJ Styles, and I do love him, um, I think he's great. But I think, to me, there, you need, like, as much as it is, I look at it as a football thing. And and then maybe I'm very out of touch in the sports landscape, but you need to move on when you have an old guy, old coach, or anything else. You gotta move on to find that next star, and that's what I think TNA needs to do. And people say, "Oh, TNA." I mean, let's be real here. WCW, uh, like say, "Oh, Rick Flair." They should. Uh, they should kept always. They always kept Rick Flair. What have you? Yeah, but to the, I honestly think they kept Ric Flair in the main event to a detriment. I mean, Ric Flair did everything and all this type of stuff, put him involved in other matches and everything else. It was to the detriment of WCW. Same with Hogan. Same with all those guys. You, you put them on, you put them on too much of a pedestal, and they're still attracting attention. See what's John, what happens to John Cena and every day I tell. I honestly cannot really think that CM Punk really had a real good Raiders champion. He's only had over ran for over a year, yeah, but most of most of it, he was just the uh, mid card champion. <coughs> and, <clears throat> and hell, Daniel Bryan, who they really screwed over, they had him basically win the title. Then they did all oh, the Triple H with uh, screwed over, uh, screwed him over, and put Randy Orton on top. Which funny when you have Randy Orton on top, <laughs> ratings go down. And I'll talk more on that in like in a couple of uh, minutes, but. Yeah, it's just like both guys never really got a full on shake with the company. And um but honestly I don't want Tina to be strapped down with that, like, hey, you know, we like the guys. We like AJ we like AJ too like look, they like AJ too much and you know, everything like why with AJ it just seems like he's just there. I mean I just like Chris Daniels. I mean uh, you know, I think I'm getting a little sick of I'm and I love Brad Influence. I think they're great. But I feel like they should they should move. On. I mean, you need to want the new younger blood. I want Kazarian to get a shot. Hell, transfer um, Christopher Daniels to his manager and have Kazarian get a good Stingles push, or what have you. I'm just saying. <coughs> uh, but you know, I I really do like AJ Styles, but I think this could be a positive thing. People say this is the end of TNA. I don't see it as much. I think this might be a good wake-up call to actually start having a real big uh, over, uh, someone not only over, but someone has a big star. Make a big star, someone that is actually memorable, someone that's actually say, hey, you know, you know, hey, AJ Styles was great, but this guy is better than larger in life, larger in life persona. This type of stuff with the WWE is surely lacking in that area. TNA, I truly believe this. Once a pro wrestling company finally gets the fact that they need more over the top personas and more, the strong female leads too, which I think is selling, by the way. Look at the major box offices of Gravity, Frozen, and Catching Fire. Um, you know, these strong female uh, protagonists, or what have you. You can see that, yeah. I mean, that's what's selling right now. And that's what I think with, team, uh, with both of those companies are lacking. And uh, I'm not encountering Ronda because Ring of Honor is, hell, there's some people's personalities were often not they're the heels, they're the villains. And I want my heels that personality. Tony Stark has personality. Uh, you have Thor has some personality. Uh, you have Spider Man has personality. I mean, hell, Luke Cage personality, I mean, uh, what have you, hell, Deadpool, I know he's a villain for the most part, yeah, he has an overabundance of personality. There's no real anybody in Ring of Honor who has personality other than the villains, what have you, in Ring of Honor. That there is no good guys with any type of personality. I mean, they say, oh, there's people in Ring of yeah, name one of them that, that's uh, a hero, the villain, because really, uh, but in pro wrestling, there was always some people who had personalities who were on the side of the age. It was Hulk Hogan. Uh, <coughs> Hulk Hogan. You had um, Macho Man, who was on the side of Angels and Demons, but had well, side of Angels, you still had that same personality. You had um, 
let's see, um, who else was actually very interesting in the uh, 80s? Uh, Ric Flair, when he was on the side of the Angels, he did pretty good. Sting. Yes, yeah, Sting was on the side of the Angels when he was faced with have you. He was an over-top person. Uh, people loved and everything. Uh, DDP was on the side of it when he got over and everything else. was the only few guys in the WCW who never went to the NWO. Uh, you had, um, see, once again, you had, um, you know, guys, I mean, hell, I have to put, I'll put Batista and uh, Cena in that role of over the uh, personalities and such that. And Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy has that person, larger life personality. He might not see it in the as Mike promo, but his other uh, type of charisma, his uh, his A ring persona, that stuff you know you don't see that anymore. I, I see a lot of poses in the ring, and and, and and there are some people who have problems like Bray Wyatt. But again, the Shield. I, I I mean, it just seems like their gimmick is constructing them, it's like and holding them back more often and bringing them more and more. You know, oh, like, oh, bring that personality uh, above or what have you. That's why I feel like, you know, stuff like The Shield, uh, with uh, Dean Ambrose, Roman Reigns, and um, uh, what have you, those guys. <laughs> uh, uh, and Rollins, uh, Seth Rollins as well. And by the way, and speaking of The Shield, I was bored of them. I got bored of The Shield in WWE. I was tired of The Shield. I can't stand them. I, I mean, I, I mean, they have great matches, but I'm just, ah, I'm tired of Sierra Hotel, India, Delta, Shield, or whatever. I, I'm just tired of it. Like, they put the matches on, they have great matches, but there's no significance to them. There's no real fire to them. There's no real care to them. There's, there's, they're meaningless matches. And you can have great matches, but if there's no point to it and no purpose to those matches, then what? I mean, then why do you have them? I want the show to actually have purpose to it, and I am tired. I am sick and tired of watching a show that has little to no purpose in it. And speaking of no, little to no purpose, let's talk about the whole authority storyline. Oh, goodness. Oh, goody, goody, gun drops. I really, really didn't like this storyline from the get-go. I had an open mind, but it just, and they just completely crapped into it. And after the first pay-per-view, I said, no, 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 no. After the first screw finish and Big Show getting knocked out, <laughs> I said, I'm done with this, and I stopped watching Raw. I started watching other stuff. I uh, started watching uh, Monday Night Football. I started watching The Blacklist, which is awesome, by the way. Um, but Jane Spade, who is going to be Ultron, I'm still wondering how Marvel's going to somehow figure all that out um, in uh, Age of Ultron, which is coming out in uh, less like, in, like in less than two years. I think they might hint at that in uh, Captain America with the Soldier, but hopefully they do that. <coughs> um My hope, though, is um, that they actually, but actually, they uh, Marvel's case, they actually start having some more minority heroes. So hopefully, uh, Luke Cage and Defender, Luke Cage, and you know all the other guys get their shots. But you know that's just my personal thing, and hopefully, the Falcon strikes a good chord with um, fellow um, you know um, movie audiences. But anyway. Back to uh, the WWE and my bitching. Well, um, honestly, I don't. I never liked storyline, and honestly, Orton didn't really do much. He's not really the main uh, antagonist of storyline, which I hate. It's Triple H, and it's funny because every time you have Randy Orton being in that top spot, is Triple H is right there, still being that major heat guy. Triple H never let him go. In fact. Randy Orton, I honestly believe this, and if I'm, and I want someone to argue me against this, but when he won the world title at 24, I honestly thought that was the worst idea ever and to, to do that to someone. To put 24, uh, he's our 24-year-old kid who won the world title, that's just, to me, stupid. I, I, I didn't like it then, and I didn't like it now. I'm like, Randy Orton is just, ugh. That's way too young, way too quick. 
You need guys say in their thirty. I mean, late twenties. I mean, hell, the reason why they did it was just saying uh, "f you" to Brock Lesnar. <clears throat> and f you to Brock Lesnar, man. That and in the end, you know, Brock Lesnar sat and laughed and you know made his money in Japan and made his money in UFC until WWE paid him a huge amount of money just to get some people over. So, by the way, how was that Triple H feud? That awesome feud, by the way. Oh yeah, that really helped Brock's mystique. Good lord, that cage match. God damn, that was one of the worst cage matches of all time. Ugh. God, um, Brock Lesnar was made out to be a little bitch. <sighs> okay, moving on. Uh, does this feel like well, Randy Orton never got a real shake? Randy Orton never really got over. Well, in fact, they had a second chance in 2009, no 10, or what have you. You had in 09. You had Randy Orton uh, just destroy everybody, and then Triple H, you know, him, like, in, like destroys Triple H's family, and that got over, and people were like, wow, this is great. <clears throat> and yet, Triple H won at WrestleMania 25? Wait, what? Oh, uh, that was it. That was it. And he won the title at Backlash, but no one really cared. That was when your most eyes were on the product, WWE, and you need to make that thing work now, or what have you. <coughs> anyway. Um, and Randy Orton, I think, has suffered ever since. And, and the ratings prove that, that. Every time Randy Orton is on top, people don't really trust him, and ratings just slowly go down. In fact, some Survivor Series, ladies and gentlemen, was, was probably one of the lowest pay-per-views WWE has ever had, hell, since December to December. In fact, I was going to talk about this last week. Uh, the, the WWE's lowest pay-per-view numbers, the Survivor Series, I'll probably make a video about this uh, when I, if I have the time, but lowest ever. It is one of the lowest. Over only 99,000, barely above December to December. It is by far, probably one of the weakest Survivor Series <clears throat> out there, and hell, you had a piss poor main event. You had a piss poor uh, matchups, and the only real matchup to actually be really cared for was the Wyatt family versus the um, uh, Beard and the Best. Other than that, people didn't really care for Survivor Series, and and that really is a sad part is that no one truly actually cared about it. No one cared, and that's the real problem with the WWE. No one cares. There's no real. Substance. I don't care about what Vince is saying. Oh, heels and faces don't really need that. They don't exist. I don't care because honestly, there's no real reason why to invest in these characters anyway because there's no passion in them. In fact, Vince is too busy trying to bring back old stars. Hell, they brought back the um the other Brock Lesnar. Hell, they bring back the Ultimate Warrior. Remember that? They completely completely crapped on the Ultimate Warrior when they had the self destruction Ultimate Warrior and made fun of him. <laughs> now, oh yeah, um, oh yeah, we need to break. Oh yeah, our our stars are sucking right now, so we have to bring back the old guys. We got to bring back the Ultimate Warrior. We got to bring back Brock Lesnar. We got to bring back Batista. We had to bring back uh, uh, Goldberg. We got to bring back old. Uh, we're trying to bring back The Rock. I'm like, you know what? Stop this. It, it's getting pathetic. This is getting WCW territories. In fact, this is basically it is WCW, 1999 to 2000. This is WCW. For all people bitch about TNA, what, when you look at WWE right now, you, you look at what WCW is doing in 99 to 2000. Three-hour rolls, no, no importance in the mid-card. Tag team titles mean nothing. Uh, announcers are completely are annoying and pointless. And the main event is um, pushed by a guy that no one cares for and no one actually really um, like nor cares for and any type of heel or really heating people are slowly turning away. Trust me, they're making money now, but sooner or later the nostalgia stuff is going to stop. <coughs> the nostalgia is going to run out and people are like, you know what, I don't care about Goldberg. I don't care about the alternate warrior. I don't care about The Rock. I don't care 
about Batista. I don't care about Cena. I don't care about Brock Lesnar. I want to see the next new stars. And trust me, you can't start bringing all these old guys back forever. Hell, Undertaker's going to have to retire soon eventually because his body can't handle that stuff. Eventually, you're going to be like, you know, we got to stand on your own two feet, WE. And I guarantee you by 2017 or 18, they're going to have no other choice but to push those crop of stars. But yet, those crop of stars are completely made uh, pushovers and push away to the side for these older guys. And when they get that star, the chance to shine, the crowd craps on them. And you know, they're going to be like, ooh, why didn't no one watch it? Because you completely crapped on the next generation of stars, WE. That's what happened. But hey, who am I? Some guy on the internet. <laughs> but anyway, my hope for 2014 is that WWE finally gets the head out of the rear end, start pushing some characters that actually mean something, start having a Divas division that actually has switches strong and positive female role models, actually start actually pushing the mid card to make it worthwhile, start actually pushing some uh, uh, talent, uh, main event talent that actually really people care for. Stop with the three-hour Monday Night Raws. Stop with these overabundant television shows and start just focusing on making the best product out there because you are the number one company and you should start acting like you're the number one company. You guys have one of the, you have every thing to gain here. You have no reason why to be so damn stagnant and scared to do anything risky. I mean, seriously, you have everything to gain here, and slowly, if you continue this safe pass, you'll slowly lose everything. All the poors and suits who have no idea what to do, they have no idea what to build, they have no idea what to really care about. They just simply just go away and they're like, well, you know, it's going to be like WCW that the um, board will basically just, ah, who really cares? They'll just stop um, hiring people who have no real uh, idea how to make a wrestling company or what have you. do things that are so stupid that makes no damn sense. And, um, yeah, that's what I think we're all right now. It's just this company needs to really start trying to become a better. I mean, I love this company. I want it to do well. But some days, man, it's getting to a point that I just can't stomach the WWE, and I want it to do well. And here's hoping 2014 that they actually start acting like the number one company. As for total nonstop action, they're on somewhere on the path here with Magnus as champion. Here's hoping they put James Storm over next year, giving him that briefcase and start having him win the world title. Because I don't want Gunnar to be anywhere near that title because, God, he looks so bland and, and forgettable. Um, start pushing, uh, you know, get a real make card together. I put guys like, um, you know, uh, Chris Sabin, Alex, uh, Chris, bring back Alex Shelley. Bring back, uh, you know, that, those guys I think they have a shot to. Um, uh, do some, uh, let's see, Austin Aries. Um, or what have you, Austin Aries, uh, uh, see, uh, see my eye on. I re- I, I, all those guys, so start doing a main event with them. I really hope that TNA starts just building the car and rebuild the knockouts division because I really thought the uh, Terra Terrell, um, the OK fight was great. I want to see more of that. I want to see great women's uh, wrestling. And not only that, but actually true, positive, uh, true positive uh, female role models and such. As much as I like Lady Topper, but she she is way too green. I hope she improves in 2014. Uh, I, I hope we get you sign Eva Lee's back. I hope that you sign a better announced team and for both companies. Better announced team, you know, get rid of Taz, get rid of JBL, get rid of Waller. I'll put William Regal. And um, Scott Stanford there, um, and uh, for WWE, and uh, for TNA, um, shoot. Uh, give it a make TNA, give, put him in a booking head booker or what have you. Um, give it a Taz, put bring back, um, put um, sh- uh, bring back uh, Todd uh, from uh, the, so NWA uh, Hollywood, and bring him back. 
and uh, and put him with Jeremy Borash. Like they actually guarantee you, and I guarantee you, you will actually actually will have some very good commentary. Because hey, when those two were paired together last time, you had some really good commentary. And here's hoping that they, um, those two guys get paired again. I really think it'll be really. I think it'll be very positive. And I think that'll probably be one of the best reasons why to watch um, TNA again. And I'm hoping, here's hoping that uh, TNA uh, starts going on that right path. And those things might not happen, but hey, it's a nice to dream. Anyway, this is Duke CT here, and thank you so much for listening to me. Duke, uh, listen to me all year long. Thank you so much for listening to me in 2013. And here's hoping in 2014 we have a better year and um, something and uh, make this podcast even bigger. And if it gets big enough, maybe I could actually do a panel on MagFest and so we could actually do a Dixie Browns live on MagFest. So, yeah, that would be pretty cool. Anyway, thank you so much for listening. This is Big CT here. Peace and love. I will see y'all when I see y'all later.